Uh, hi guys, hope everyone is doing well. Um, all right, I just want to take some time to address um, a particular challenge that people have been contacting me um, and asking for advice about. And um, I think of recent, um, in the past few months, I've had people um, contact me with a worry about um, their money situations. And a lot of times it's not the fact that they are not earning, but they feel dissatisfied with the fact that they um, are not getting to save. They are not getting to save money. So it seems like if they earn money, but at the end of the month, um, they don't have money. They are not able to have enough money to put away. So they don't have money to put away. They don't have money in savings. Um, so I, I want to take some time to address this, especially um, for for this time. You understand? Um, and um, I, I hope I'm able to clarify this in someone's mind so that you can have a good understanding of the dynamics of money. Um, so, first of all, if you're in that situation where you are earning money, let's say a job, um, you're being paid a salary, or you're working a business, and you're earning a, a living from your profit on your business, and um, at the end of the month, you're thinking, okay, I don't have anything to put away. I don't have anything in savings. And that's kind of making you feel like you are failing in your relationship with money. Um, I want to tell you, you need there are a lot of things you need to assess before coming to this um, feeling of failure with money because you don't have money saved um, in a bank. You understand? Or you don't have money put away somewhere. Before you come to that conclusion, um, there, are, there are some important things you need to ask yourself. Um, because you really might not be failing. And this way, I want us to understand that saving in itself is a step, is a step in um, handling money. And um, I'll, I'll try to discuss what these three steps might be um, when it comes to money. Now, when you earn money, the first obligation with money is to manage it well first obligation with money is to manage it well so when we talk about money management what we talk about is how you use money to meet certain needs you understand um, so money management is the first step not saving saving is the second step money management is the first step so when you are um when you when you beat yourself up and say i work i earn money but i'm not able to save um it's almost like someone that is complaining about not being able to swallow food you understand the first question is not about you being able to swallow food the first thing is are you able to chew up food are you able to chew you understand because because chewing makes swallowing easier so the problem might not be swallowing it might be the fact that you're not chewing and money management is the chewing part of handling money and so we must think are you managing well because when you manage money well it makes it easier to save but saving is not the first thing in fact saving is not the, it's not the first thing at all especially for people in this climate called nigeria and I dare to say most part of Africa. And this is where I think we really need to be careful about, about westernized concepts and um, um, westernized information. Um, because that way you need to really know where you are, where you are located, you understand? Uh, so I'm in Nigeria. I'm going to talk about people in Nigeria. And... Um, it's very hard to come to that place to earn enough money to save. So I don't think we should beat ourselves up because we are not saving. And um, if you are in Western culture you, or Western environment, you realize that saving might be, might be easier, might be. 
um, because there's something um, that that is well sought out there that is not totally figured out here in Nigeria or in Africa. And that is when we talk about basic needs, basic needs. Um, and so there are three types of needs. Um, I will call the first step basic needs, and these are survival needs, food, clothing, um, shelter. Very important, basic needs. You need that. Those are survival needs, basic needs. Then you have standard needs. And standard needs are things um, that um, that you need to complement some of these your basic needs. You understand? So, 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 so they help your basic need to meet up to a particular standard. So I'll put it this way. Shelter is a basic need. But you don't need to live in a house with furniture. You can sit on the floor. But having furniture is a standard need. You understand? Just having furniture, having a bed in your house is a standard need. You don't need to have a bed in your house. As long as you have a shelter that can keep you away from the element of the weather, then um, that's good enough. But you know when you're in that house, there's also a standard within that house that should operate. So having a, a bed, having chairs, um, important. Um, having something in the kitchen to refrigerate food is important. It helps you to keep a particular living standard. You understand those standards? So they're very important too. Or else that basic living can become very stressful if you don't meet standard needs. So basic needs, number one, you understand? You need to meet basic needs. Eating, shelter, and clothing. Clothing, you don't have to wear the new, you don't have to wear new clothes, you understand? You don't even have to wear clean clothes. You don't have to. You just need to have clothes that keep you warm enough and help you, you know, cover up your nakedness. But then standard, standard of society is to look presentable. So you might need to get clothes that are not tattered and stuff like that. So standard very important too. Um, so what don't you think about when you make when you're making money is basic needs are they covered? Standard needs, you understand, are they covered? Very important. Um, because in I never I talk about be careful when you when you when you kind of take advice from people abroad, whether in the East or in the West, whether in Asian countries or in the Americas, you understand, you need to be very, very careful because those people have figured out basic needs, at least to a large extent. In a lot of places, there's some places where basic needs are still a struggle. But then if you go to a place like America, you still have shelters where people that can build houses can have a place to sleep at night, especially when the weather is harsh. They have shelters that have beds, that have heaters. They also have kitchens where people can go and have a meal. It might not be the best meal in the world, but they have a meal. You understand? They have a meal. They have a meal. They have shelters. And they also have charities. You understand? Like Salvation Armies, where people Salvation Army, where people can pick up clothes. Do we have that in Nigeria? No. We hardly have shelters. We don't have public kitchens. And we don't have charities that are seeking to... Very few of them. Very few. Few and far between. The ones that even say they are working. Are they really working? You understand? That are really allowing you to go somewhere once a month and pick up free clothes. You understand? Unless you are in an IDP camp, that cannot happen. Even IDP camps never happen in Nigeria. So basic needs are not really met. That's why you can't compare yourself to the person that is saving abroad. Because basic needs have been cut out. You understand? So then they are left with standard needs. And standard needs are, are pretty much, you know. You can choose. You can choose to do them or not. You understand? You can choose to. You understand? You can choose. But here, you need to first struggle for basic needs. So when you are saying you're not saving, don't be too hard on yourself. Because sometimes what you're earning is just allowing you to meet basic needs. And then you kind of struggle with the remainder which you should have saved or which you are expecting to save with standard needs, which are also important. You understand? Standard needs are also important. When you have a house and you spend money on mosquito net, it's a standard need because, because if you were not to, you can get sick. You understand? That's a standard need. Um, you know, those things are important. Um, so you have standard needs and basic needs. And the third type of needs, and remember I'm saying needs here, 
um, not as you know, needs are deeper than this, but I'm just using needs to qualify everything. Some of them are needs slash wants. Now we have the third type of needs that we might have, which, which are really like wants, what we desire, and these are luxuries. These are things that you don't really need. You can do well without them, but you have enough to get them and to have something left over. You understand? They're like treats. They're treats. You understand? They're treats. Um, sometimes air conditioning can be a treat. You might not need air conditioning. You might be good with a fan. You understand? That can be a treat. Um, um, having a microwave can be a treat. Having a particular type of fridge and freezer might be a treat. You understand? All those things are treats. Um, they're treats. Um, you know? Sometimes having internet connection can be a treat, but sometimes it can also be a standard need. So it's hard. Sometimes what is a treat for you is a standard need for somebody, especially somebody who needs to work with the internet to do their job. You understand? So some people might see it as having an inverter as a luxury, but for some people it's not a luxury because they need to have constant electricity to do their work. You understand? So, but you need to understand that life is divided into basic needs, standard needs, and luxuries. And you must be able to categorize what is the standard need for you and what's the luxury, what's the basic need is established for everybody. And then you must ask yourself, does your government provide basic needs for you? Is there an option for basic needs to be covered? If it's not, then don't be too hard on yourself when you're not saving. As a matter of fact, you should applaud yourself for, for being able to meet up with your basic needs. You understand? Very important. And if you can get squeeze some standard needs in there, that's good. You are doing well already. Before you now start thinking of saving, you must manage your money to meet your basic needs. That's, the, that's that what's called responsibility. When you can manage money to meet basic needs and accommodate some standard needs, it doesn't matter about luxury. You are already doing well. That, that should be applauded. You should be applauded for being able to do that. Very important. Your, your report card is not how much you can save left over. It's how you can manage your resources to meet, meet those first needs, your basic needs and your standard needs. So money management is a priority, is an obligation. That's the first obligation when you're earning money, to manage it well. Saving, saving is a privilege. Saving is a privilege. We must always understand that. A lot of times people position saving as an obligation. It is not. We've been taught that because we've been taught by people in the West who have money management in terms of meeting basic needs already sorted out. They, 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 they sorted out for most of them, you understand? Um, and that's why they can say, what you have left over, put it into saving, you understand? But here it's very different. So money management, number one, how am I able to spend my money to be able to consistently meet my basic needs and upgrade my standard needs? Time, you understand? Accommodate my standard needs. So this month I can buy a bed. Next month I can buy a chair. Next month I can buy a, a fridge, a small fridge to be able to cool my food. This I can buy a stove. This, you know, that's good. You're doing well. Forget about what you have left over that you can you can meet your standard needs and consistently cover your basic needs. You are doing well. You are doing well. But you have so many people because they want to get money from you. Do you understand? They would always tell you, come and save with us, come and save with us. But you have to think, am I privileged to save yet? Privilege. Saving is a privilege. It's a good privilege, but it's a privilege all the same. I remember my first encounter with saving money. I was in primary school. Somebody gave me a piggy bank as a birthday present. I think it was my 10th birthday or so. Piggy bank. Looked interesting. Because the piggy bank was a phone booth. A phone booth. Um, one of these um, English phone booths, red. One of those ones that Superman will enter and change into, you know, superhero. So I liked it. The, the illustration was very good. So I thought, ah, what's this? I want to be the piggy bank. You put money inside. So every time I got money from a visitor visiting, and you know, then when visitors visit, they're about to go, they give you money. And by saving the privilege, I was privileged to have people who were well to do enough to visit us. And when they were leaving, 
would leave us money. That was a privilege. So they gave me money, and every time, because I wasn't feeding myself, I wasn't housing myself, I wasn't clothing myself, I could put that money in that piggy bank. And I kept on putting it there, putting it there, putting it there, putting it there. Now, people might give me credit and say, Amo, oh, you are being very responsible, very financially this. You know, maybe, yes. But the most important thing over all those things about being financially responsible and stuff was I was privileged. You understand? I lived in a house when my parents were both working, making enough money to feed us three square meals, um, to clothe us, um, for us to have a roof over our head, to send us to school, to have entertainment. What was I spending the money on? So it wasn't really about my financial acumen. It was about my privilege. If I was living in a house where we didn't have enough to eat, my parents would take that money from me. I wouldn't have anything to put in the piggy bank. So that doesn't mean the guy that doesn't put in the piggy bank is, is worse than the guy that puts in the piggy bank. It's just privilege. I was privileged to save because my basic needs were met. Not because I was great at money management. You understand? And that's what you must be careful. We must be careful on those things that we take in when people guilt trip us for not having much left over, saying you are not wise. No. Give yourself some credit for being able to meet your basic needs and your standard needs. Savings is a privilege. And a lot of times, when you are able to meet up to the obligation of um, money management, well, it will give you, it will take you to the place where you are privileged enough to save. You understand? But it's slow. So when you're able to meet up your basic needs and stuff, you get some things, you're able to get some your fridge in place, your your bed and all those things. After a while, you realize that your life is standard enough. Now, this is where wisdom comes in. You must know when your life is standard enough. Because a lot of people still keep putting bricks on that standard life. That's why they're not able to save. So they don't know when they've crossed from standard to luxury. You understand? So then you now think, I want to change my bed. Do you really need to change your bed? I want to change my furniture. Do you really need to change your furniture? I want to get a bigger fridge. Do you need, do you need a bigger fridge? So you must know when to halt with standard living. When to like say, okay, we are good enough. Now I think we should be able to have the privilege to put some money away. Do you understand? To put money away. And that's when you now start thinking about saving. And that's when you can begin to feel some frustration with yourself if you are not doing that. That means you now have an addiction to acquire. Any small thing that is ad advertised online, you, you take it. Any small thing you see, you take it. You go and buy it. Um, you try to impress people. That means you are, you are changing stuff to impress people, impress your neighbors, impress your friends, impress your boyfriend, your girlfriend. Then that is when you can now have a concern that I, I have this privilege to be able to save, but then I'm not using it. That would have been me taking the money that Vistos gave me to now go to, to to now go and start buying biscuits and I'm being fed at home and I get biscuits from, from home once in a while that biscuit now becomes an unnecessary luxury do you understand? So, 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 so some of you are at that stage where you are earning basic met where you, basic has even been met to the point whereby you have a house of your own no rent good applaud yourself good um, some of you basic has been met um, standard has been met. You understand? You have a decent enough place and stuff like that. Now you now you now need to think of how to start saving. Saving now becomes a privilege you can afford. You understand? So that that's when you now start thinking, I should put money aside. I should put money aside. And um, one thing saving does, it takes you to a third level where you now have the choice of investment. You understand? So investment is a choice. You understand? Investment is a choice. Um, and, and, and that's where I really believe we are missing it, where we begin to make investment a priority, saving a priority, and money management a choice. You understand? So when you meet people, they come and advertise something to you, come and invest. First, think of where you are. Are you in the money management level? Are you saving level? Have you saved enough to, to take on this choice of investment? Those are three questions you ask yourself. Once you ask yourself that question, it makes you know whether you should take that flyer, 
engage no matter how what they are telling you oh come and invest in this in this land come and invest in this currency come and invest in this mm -mm. think of where you are first because you have a lot of people investing when they know even done money management because everybody is investing so you have investors that are suffering in their daily life they are suffering but their money is invested somewhere that should never be you should never be suffering while investing do you understand never be suffering the least you can be doing when you are investing for your life to be standard the best you do when you are investing for your life to be able to even say you have some luxuries in life that you are cutting out sometimes or cutting out to allow you to invest but the least is standard your life is standard enough to invest but when you invest before money management you will be suffering while you are investing and that's the worst way to invest and those are the people because investment is a gamble and that's people that get worse hits when their investment fails that people that commit suicide when their investment fails you understand those people that have not managed money they've not saved and now they're now going to investment which is a choice only for people who have the privilege of saving so i see a lot of young people you understand basic needs have not been met but then they'll tell you I have investment in this investment in this investment in this and then they go out to get robbed someone takes all their investment from their cryptocurrency wallet and stuff like that it's very sad when that happens because this person the first reason why you're getting robbed in the first place is because you are still managing you see they, they get robbed in a bus stop and stuff like that i get it's sad because number one you haven't put yourself in a place where you are, your life is standard enough to be able to have a vehicle that will at least shield me from people on the outside. You know, reduces my chances of getting robbed. That's the truth. Most of the people that get stuck up, you understand, are robbed. And people, you know, it happens in bus stop most of the time. People that are trying to manage their life to get to a particular standard. But then that person has a cryptocurrency wallet that he has invested in that just wipes out in one night. You understand and that person enters into some deep depression because now there's nothing to fall on nothing life is now totally miserable now you're, in, now you're in a corner so um i just want to encourage you if you're feeling that way right now where you're like saying i'm making money i'm not saving that's not the first thing by which you judge whether you are doing well financially the first thing you judge is are you managing money well are you able to chew your food well then swallowing comes second i remember when you swallow when you chew your food well mm, swallowing will even become like a reflex you understand what i'm saying you have enough and just like unconsciously you're putting money away unconsciously you understand swallowing becomes a reflex so some people never that reflex never kicks in they'll spend everything but that's when that's a different kettle of fish altogether but most people when you're able to manage well make um go from basic living to standard living um you realize that saving becomes easier it's not stressful and once you can leave that privilege um you know, of saving you you now begin to choose your options of investment your choice of what you want to invest in and that will help you eventually so i hope that helps somebody here today i just thought to share that with you